Hi everybody, welcome to the next lecture on computer animation. Today about the virtual camera and its projection matrix. So here you can see the principle. Um, so here this box um, is basically a pinhole camera where you have a tiny hole here. And then you have a 3D object like this ball. And um, then you have light rays going through this little hole. And because the light waves, light uh, waves always go on straight lines and they all have to pass through this hole, they um, then make a um, projection of this object onto this 2D surface, the screen here. So in effect, we have a mapping of 3D coordinates of the 3D object onto 2D coordinates of the image plane. So here is the image plane. And you can also do this by using a projection matrix P in computer animation. So in computer animation, we, we have a virtual camera. Basically, we just have the 3D object in our computer and we have to simulate this camera. So basically, the simulation is then our virtual camera. Yeah, and for that, homogeneous coordinates are useful, right? So homogeneous coordinates means we have an additional helper variable w, right? So here you can see an example. We have our coordinates x, y, and z. And additionally, you have this helper variable w. So here I have some fantasy numbers. And um, they are converted into 3D coordinates by just dividing by this helper variable w. So basically we normalize everything to w equals 1. And then we get these 3D coordinates. So basically w here in this case is practically a scaling factor. This can also be used for, ins for instance to create a camera projection matrix. So in the projection actually we, we do have this scaling. When an object is further away, it appears smaller on our screen. So basically then a W uh, takes on the role of the distance from the camera. Yeah, but homogeneous coordinates can also be used for implementing a translation into a matrix. So usually we have this matrix to um, implement rotations of a 3D object but um, translations um, appear as a sum. So um, for implementing translations, this additional coordinate becomes um, useful. So here you can see it. We have our 3D coordinates of our object. And in this matrix here, those three coordinates remain unchanged because we have this diagonal with ones, with ones here. And then we have the last entry here, our w is one for our object. And we can see that um, the column, which belongs to this helper variable, now contains a shift, right? Tx, Ty, Tz. So we have a translation of our point, 3D point in, in space, and basically add um, this translation vector to it. And that can be implemented with this um, matrix multiplication where basically this now includes this translation vector as the last column. Right? So the output is basically x, y, z, the original, plus then tx, ty, tz. And the w remains 1. So here you can see the result. Right? You have an addition of our translation uh, vector. And this is implemented in OpenGL with a function GL translate f. So f is for float, uh, for float arguments. That means the coordinates are float numbers. Right, so this is practically uh, practical. We just can translate an object using this function in OpenGL. Yeah, so I mentioned usually you would do rotation with this such a matrix, which you can still do. Basically, we are not using um, 
the last helper variable here is just one and also the corresponding column is just zeros and then a, a one. So all we do here is we rotate the coordinates x, y, z um, around axis, um, I guess y, no, the x-axis. So we rotate this point around the x-axis by the angle alpha. So the x-axis is unchanged and y and z is doing the rotation of the coordinates around axis x. And this is implemented in OpenGL with the function GL rotate f. Right, so you can use this function to rotate an entire object. Yeah, so this leads us to the projection matrix. The projection matrix uh, is basically doing, um, uh, also using a matrix in homogeneous coordinates, as you can see here. So here we have the word coordinates, x, y, z, and then this w. And here we have some matrix entries, which we still see what it is. And out comes now just three coordinates, x, y, and w. So that means here we have a projection on our two-dimensional screen with a helper variable w. So here, 3D word coordinates go into 2D screen coordinates. So P is the projection matrix, this piece here. V is the 3D word coordinates, this vector here. And lowercase v is the coordinates on the image plane of the camera. So that's this vector here. The part of the matrix that is multiplied by W is a translation. The rest is a rotation and scaling. So here, this would be translation and then the rest would be rotation and also scaling. Yeah, so here is an, a simple example. So here note that X, Y and W is the same point as x divided by w, y divided by w, and 1. They are the same point. Um, you can also read more about it in this on German Wikipedia page. And this is an example for a projection on the x, y plane um, at z equals 1. So basically here we define a plane here to be on the coordinate at z equals 1. So here we have our projection plane and here down we have x and um, perpendicular to the screen we would have y. All right. Yeah, so now look at um, this matrix and now you can see this last column here is just zeros. So basically the w here doesn't really matter. Right? It's all zeros anyway. And then here, the Z coordinate is now projected or mapped onto the W coordinate of our screen coordinate system. So this, these are the homogeneous coordinates of the screen. And this, it's W now becoming the Z from the word coordinates, right? So that means X, Y, the screen coordinates become the word coordinates x, y, divided by coordinate z, which here is the distance to the camera. Remember here z equals 1 is the camera plane. That means the z coordinate tells us in this case the distance from the camera. And that means um, the further this word object is, a, is away from the camera, the smaller it appears on the screen. Right. If z is 2, then it's just half size. If z is 10, it's just tenth size, and so on, as we would expect from a perspective uh, projection. Yeah, so this is a possible camera prospect, uh, projection. Yeah, and actually OpenGL has two projection modes. So what we just saw is um, corresponding to this perspective projection. But there's also an orthogonal um, projection, GL ortho, which is basically a parallel projection which corresponds to a zoom uh, lens with infinite length. So basically it just makes a parallel projection of um, 
of the light rays onto the screen. So that means uh, the objects stay at the same size no matter how far they are away. Yeah, but this is actually the simpler one and that's why I want to show it first. So you have this GL ortho and here you define in this argument um, basically this, the piece of um, space uh, that, you, that you want to project on your screen. So the screen has a limited size, so you need to define what part of the 3D world you want to project. So here you define the boundaries. Here's the left boundary, the right boundary, the bottom and top boundary, and also the distance, z near and z far. So only points in these um, boundaries are projected onto our screen. Yeah, it's uh, different for perspective projection because there we have an angle under which we see the world. Here we um, assume that we have a lens with a finite um, focal length. So here we define a field of view. So this is the field of view in y direction of the spatial area to be um, imaged in degrees. So basically the vertical direction in degrees plus minus so many degrees. So this is basically taking the role of top and bottom. Then we have an aspect ratio, uh, which is basically the factor of width to height. Right. So, um, so this is basically taking the field of view of y and then you multiply with this aspect ratio and then you have the field of view in uh, the x direction. So for instance, um, 16 to 9. Uh, would be um, quite common. Then you still have this z near and z far, right? where you define uh, in which range and which distance range you want to do the projection. Yeah, so first uh, to the orthogonal, the simpler one. So here we have left, right, bottom, top, z near, z far. Mm. Yeah, so Using this orthogonal projection, we take um, this range of uh, coordinates from left to right, bottom to top, and near to far, and scale and shift it to a cube of unit size. So we start with a large world cube, and then we um, scale and shift it to a unit cube around the coordinate origin. So here we basically scale and shift it such that this uh, large cube now appears around x between minus 1 and 1, y between minus 1 and 1, and z between minus 1 and 1. Right. So that can be easily done using our homogeneous coordinates and our matrix. We saw we can do scaling, rotation, and shifting, translation. So we do it such that our desired cube appears within these coordinates. Yeah, and then for the parallel projection on our screen, the xy plane, the z coordinate is simply omitted. Right here we can simply omit it because it doesn't change the size of the projection. Right, and if necessary we can omit hidden elements in the z direction. Yeah, you can also see more details here in this web page. Here you can see the resulting projection matrix for the 2D render mode for GL ortho. So here the arguments that we just saw and here's the resulting projection matrix. So here is um, the vector of the world coordinates, x, y, z, and here the helper variable w is just 1. And here on the diagonal entries, we can see the scaling. So each coordinate axis is scaled such that the resulting coordinates are within this unit cube centered around the origin. So here you can see it's divided by right minus left, here top minus bottom, and here far minus near, right? And this um, factor two 
make sure that we have um, the scaling from minus 1 to 1, which is a distance of 2. Yeah. Here we have the translation vector. So this makes sure that um, this cube is now centered around the coordinate origin. So here we do the scaling um, such that the cube has uh, edge length of 2. And here we do the shifting such that it appears centered around uh, the origin of our coordinate system. Yeah, and often the z coordinate is assumed with reverse sign, reverse sign compared to z near and z far because the projection is assumed to be located behind the camera lens. So that's sometimes a little bit tricky and you need to keep in mind if you get a strange result, um, you know, maybe you should try changing the sign of the z coordinate. Yeah, so then this, uh, this z coordinate is simply dropped in the next step. Uh, and we can test it by using a point in the left lower near corner with x equals l, y equals for lower, y equals b for bottom, and z equals minus n for near. Right, so here you can see the sign change. And just um, plug it into our um, world coordinate vector and see what it does. So we can see it here as this little Python example. So here we assume right is 10, left is minus 10. These are the coordinates. T top is 5, bottom is minus 5, near is 5, far is 15. Right, so it's um, in front of um, our camera at these distances. So here is then our projection matrix. So here just entered uh, what we just saw in the previous uh, matrix. So here 2 divided by r minus l, then two zeros, and then the last entry is part of our translation vector here. Then here's the next row. Here in the middle we have 2 divided by t minus b, then another zero. Here the translation vector. And then here, the third row, we have minus 2 divided by f minus n, far minus near. Here, translation. And here, this was for the helper variable w. This is then here our test um, point in 3D space, lb minus n 1.0. So here we have this sign change. And then we take a look at the result. And this is what we get, right? We have P is our um, projection matrix, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, minus 0.2. Here's our translation. Here's our word vector with the coordinates. And here you can see the projected um, point still having three dimensions x, y, and z. And remember in the last step, z was simply dropped. So what's left is then just minus 1 and minus 1. So we can actually easily try it using Python. So let me try that here. So I'm opening a terminal window. Here's a terminal window. Make it a little bit larger here in the font. And I can open Python. So here I'm typing Python 3. And then I'm getting into the interactive mode. And I'm copying this part here. Copy and paste. Yeah, that worked. And I guess I have to change um, the quotation marks here because this does, they don't look like the correct quotation marks. Yeah, right, exactly. So I have to change them. This is always kind of tricky when you copy from a um, text processing document that there are different quotation marks. So now that works. So here now you can see the results. So 
What do we have? Yeah, V is still missing. Yeah, so let's see if I can actually reverse copy it. Copy. Yeah, that seems to work. So the next is V. V and then the last one is P times V copy and paste yes so here you can see the results so this is then our projection matrix here depends on our corners of our world cube this is our point in the world and this is the projected point and we can see it indeed is at one of the corners of our projected cube so it's uh, indeed at the lower left lower near corner so indeed right so that works so that shows that our formula, at least um, in, for this case, it worked. So this is actually also a good test for of something. If if you if you implement something and you try it, then if it's wrong, then usually just at the first trial you will notice that something's wrong. Quite rarely it happens that you try it and it works, and in in other cases it doesn't work. So. Having this example is usually also a good test for your software or for your algorithm. Yeah, so in summary, the orthogonal projection maps a world cube to a unit cube and then omits the Z coordinate. Right. So that leads us to the perspective projection. And for that, we have the function GLU perspective. And um, yeah, here you can see the arguments again. Field of view, aspect ratio, z near, z far. And this is kind of um, a truncated pyramid on its side, right? It's not a cube, because here we have angles uh, defined by field of view. So this angle is uh, vertically and horizontally. So this is more like a pyramid on its side. And um, it's truncated because we have z near and z far. So it's, uh, we don't reach the peak of the pyramid, but uh, we have stopped it with z near. And this um, pyramid on its side is, is mapped then on the unit cube again. Right? So the mapping is in this, to the same range as for the orthogonal projection. And afterwards, again, the z-coordinate is emitted uh, for the projection on the xy plane. And you can also read more about it in this link here. Yeah, the aspect ratio is width divided by height, field of view is um, the angle along the y-axis, and z near and z far uh, define the distance from the camera. And these values are positive, they must be positive. Right, so let me go into the slide mode. Yeah, so this is the function that um, OpenGL provide, provides for this virtual camera with perspective projection. And remember, perspective projection is actually the more realistic one, because in reality, we have a finite focal length, which means um, objects in the distance appear smaller. And this is only uh, for the perspective projection. Yeah, so this is the corresponding perspective projection matrix. So here you can see the world coordinate vector and here the corresponding matrix. And here you can see the F and the F is the cotangent of field of view, this angle, divided by two. So for instance, if we have a field of view of 90 degrees, that means 45 up and 45 degrees down. So that's why we look at the 45 degrees here, field of view divided by 2. So this is like the up angle. And the cotangent is uh, in a triangle, this is the adjacent side uh, divided by the opposite side. 
And here you can see this first entry on the diagonal here uh, has f divided by the aspect ratio, the second has the f, and both affect x and y coordinates and they make sure that the world coordinates x and y are scaled into our unit cube. Right, so same principle here. Uh, just now for the author for the perspective projection. These entries here for the z are um, um, also for the mapping and shifting of the z coordinate into the unit cube. And finally, we also have the z here being mapped on the w of our unit cube. And that means uh, we, we have this division by z after normalizing to w equals 1. Right, so this uh, makes sure that far away objects appear smaller. Right. So it's probably easiest to just try it out to see if it works. Because here just looking at it, it's not so clear if, if this is actually working. So we can try it out again. So here we test the projection, for instance, by inserting a point in the right upper near corner with field of view of 90 degrees. And that means um, f will become 1, right? the cotangent of 45 degrees. Then we have aspect x equals um, um, aspect divided by f times z near. So this is the um, right upper near corner. Um, y equals 1 divided by f times z near, and z is z near. Right? So, yeah, let's simply try it out. So here's the Python script for testing. So here we take f equals 1 again, right, from the 45 degrees. Here we set the aspect ratio to 2, right, so it's twice as wide as high. z near is 5 again, z far is 15 again. So here's our corresponding projection matrix, as we just saw, basically plugged it in here. And here we have our uh, vertex in the right upper near corner in homogeneous coordinates. So here we have aspect ratio divided by f, remember f was 1, times z near. So here this would be 2 times z near and z near was 5, so the first entry will be 2 in this case. Here, then, for the y coordinate, we just have 1 divided by f times z near, and here, for the z coordinate, we have minus z near. And here, the homogeneous coordinate w. So then we again print p, v, and then the projection p times w. And finally, we can normalize it. So here we um, cannot simply drop um, the z coordinate because we still have to normalize it to um, w equals 1. So that's why I'm taking pr divided by tr of 3, which is the w, the homogeneous coordinate w. So and this is then the result. So here we can see uh, the projection matrix. Right. Here we can now see our point in world coordinates, 10, 5, minus 5, x, y, z, and here's w. And this is then the resulting point in our unit cube around the origin. And we see indeed x is 1, y is 1, z is minus 1. Right. So this is exactly a point on this unit cube. So this is indeed what we have. So it's uh, on the right upper near corner. So that works. So in summary, the perspective projection maps a word permit into a unit cube and then simply omits the z coordinate. Yeah, and that's it for, t for this uh, video. So next time more on parametric curves. Thank you for attention and see you in the next video.